It's about that time. What time is it? It's time for another Triple Threat video here on OTRS Central. Got an assortment of topics to talk about this week in what is frankly to me a bit of a slow news week when it comes to professional wrestling. So I was frankly trying to drag the bottom of the barrel to try and find some topics to talk about. But that I most certainly did. And make sure you check out my appearance on the In The Rope show in my face-off, my rant-off against Matt, the wannabe schleg daddy. Make sure you check it out and make sure you vote for who you think really won that rant-off. This guy right here. All right, are you ready for the triple threat? I am, so let's get started. Apparently, it's not only a slow news week and a slow time for me as a professional wrestling fan coming on here and talking about that topic here on YouTube. It's also a slow time for the WWE, where they're also dragging the bottom of the barrel trying to find uh, topics for DVDs and topics for content for their precious WWE network. I didn't know that they're doing a DVD about the Shield. The Shield, for Christ's sakes. And apparently one of the taglines here, and I'm paraphrasing, was that it's a retrospective look at the most dominant team in WWE history. And apparently there's going to be a 30-minute preview on the WWE Network after Raw Monday night. Holy Christ. Have things gotten that bad? Where we're not only doing DVD projects about the Shield, but we're trying to sit there and oversell our shit so much, WWE. We are calling the Shield the most dominant team in WWE history. What in the bluest of blue fucks makes them the most dominant team in WWE history? Great recent faction? Absolutely. One of the better factions to come along in quite some time? Absolutely. Very productive. That helped get every member of the group better and elevate their profile? Absolutely. But the most dominant team in WWE history? This is why it's hard to ever take the WWE seriously. And this is why people get turned off by the WWE in part. It's always that overselling. It's always trying to sell the here and now and always trying to piss on the past. Nobody in their right mind with a logical brain, in my opinion, would view the Shield as the most dominant team in WWE history. Furthermore, what the hell did they do to deserve a DVD? That's how bad it's gotten. That's how bad it is. Is that we're doing DVD projects about the shield for Christ's sakes. The shield. I'm sorry. That's just ludicrous. I understand. You got content you got to put out. You got DVDs to still try and sell. You got to have content for your precious WWE network. But holy Christ, the shield. We're doing a DVD about the Shield. What did they really honestly do that necessitates an entire DVD? Maybe one one-hour special on the WWE Network one time and that is it. Do they really necessitate or justify an entire DVD and on top of that being called the most dominant team in WWE history? I told you it was a slow news week. This is about the best I got. Holy Christ. Leave it to me to never miss out on an opportunity to bash on that Memphis mid-card piece of crap, Jeff fucking Jarrett. Well, I see an opportunity, and by God, I'm going to pounce on it, and it feels good to do so. The reason is very simple. I told you a long time ago that I thought GFW was going to be nothing more than a Jeff Jarrett vanity project. And that is exactly what the fuck it seems to me is what it's all about. This asshole for over a year has been talking about GFW. It's going to do this. It's going to do that. The bottom line is it hasn't done a fucking thing. At some point in time, if you keep talking about it and nothing comes to fruition, we're going to stop taking it seriously and we shouldn't have taken you seriously to begin with. I know I most certainly don't take you seriously and never have and probably never will. You've been talking about this like this is a real thing for over a fucking year now. GFW, GFW, GFW. Well, where the hell is GFW? What have you actually done, Jeff Jarrett? Other than get yourself a lot of free publicity on meaningless wrestling websites and get some fans to get all hopped up about the possibilities of the awesomeness that you're going to bring because they have these great delusions that you did something incredible with TNA. 
the truth of the matter is far more sinister. GFW is nothing more than an attempt, a pathetic attempt at that by Jeff Jarrett to get the Jeff Jarrett name out there. The one thing he's actually been involved with was bringing an English version of a Japan show here to the States. Is that what GFW is going to be? Allow New Japan to give you the content and then you just bring it stateside? How is that a thing? All this talk about, oh, we're going to do this. We're going to change the business. We're going to change the landscape. We're going to give the fans what they want. Well, what the fans want is entertaining professional wrestling. And you haven't given them none of that. What they want is a viable, legitimate alternative to the WWE that they can be proud of. And you most certainly haven't done that. And what they most certainly want is you to actually follow through on what the fuck you've said that you're going to do. And of course, it's so often the case when it comes to this Memphis mid-card piece of crap, this arrogant, egotistical glory hog, Jeff Jarrett, he hasn't delivered on that either. The only thing he has succeeded in doing is getting more people to be of the camp of mine, and that is wanting Jeff fucking Jarrett to go the fuck away. Can we please, wrestling media, stop talking about GFW like it's a thing? Can we please stop interviewing Jeff Jarrett like he's a thing to be taken seriously? Jeff Jarrett is a joke. GFW is a joke. Stop fucking talking about this freaking fantasy. It's global fantasy wrestling. And you know why? Because it isn't a thing. It doesn't exist. It isn't real. And the only thing more unreal is the fact that people still think that Jeff fucking Jarrett is relevant. It's been a slow news week for WWE professional wrestling as a whole, and I've been desperately looking for topics to talk about in this triple threat, frankly, and in particular positive topics to talk about. But I finally got one. I finally got one. And that's the news that, spoiler alert, Alex Riley is back as an active in-ring competitor, albeit on NXT and not on Raw or SmackDown, where the fuck he deserves to be. Well, damn it, that's good news to me. Damn it, that got me a little bit excited. And damn it all because of this and the fact that, spoiler alert, he's entering into a program with new NXT champion Kevin Owens, apparently. Well, by God, that means that for the next few weeks at least, I've got to watch NXT. I've got no choice. i got to support my dude, Alex Riley, against my other dude, Kevin Owens. That's it, WWE. You've left me no alternative. I have to watch NXT now. Fuck you. Thank you. I just hope that the WWE actually gives Alex Riley a fair shot here. Because I never understood why they backed off of him the way they did. I don't care what you've heard about the whole crap with Cena. I don't care about the thing about, oh, he botched here and he botched there. Okay, well, who hasn't pissed off Cena at some point in time? You know, Cena's bad for everybody, let's be honest. Uh, and as far as botching, how many times has Cena botched shit, both promos and matches? How many times did Randy Orton over the years botch his fucking finisher? His goddamn finisher, his signature move, and he couldn't get it right. And he still doesn't get it right more often than not when he tries to RKO somebody through a table and it doesn't break. Yeah, we push that guy as much as he's ever been pushed. You know, sometimes guys make mistakes. They stub their toe along the way, and that's the whole point. You live, you learn, you grow, and you get better. And I don't care if you're a fan of Riley or not. I think everybody could at least agree, maybe, that they saw some potential in him. I know I most certainly did at a time where the WWE needs new babyfaces, likable babyfaces. Here was a guy that was aligned with The Miz in 2011, aligned with the guy who beat John Cena at WrestleMania 27. He goes over him at Capital Punishment 2011, and then they do nothing fucking with him at all. They yank him. They sabotage him. They bury him, just like they've done with so many other guys that either I've liked or that you've tried to get behind and you liked. So finally, after saddling him with this analyst crap and having him be a commentator on NXT and on the Raw pre-show, he gets a chance, a second chance, to be an in-ring competitor. And it's about damn bloody time. It's always frustrated me that they got off of this guy's bandwagon. It's always frustrated me that they intentionally sabotaged him. And what's even more frustrating to me is the fact that they've basically done it to him for the past almost four fucking years now. At least he's back. And because of that, I have no choice. I have no alternative. I must watch NXT. 
So that's it. Let me know what you think about the Shield getting their own DVD for crap. No, uh, Jeff Jarrett and his ridiculous vanity project that is global farce or global fantasy wrestling or whatever global fuck wrestling you want to call it. Now let me know what you think about the news that, spoiler alert, Alex Riley is back as an in-ring competitor on NXT. I know it's got the Schleg Daddy excited. Let me know all your thoughts on all these topics in the comment section below. And again, make sure you check out my appearance on the In The Rope show in the Ran Off Against Matt. And let that jabroni know who the real Rant Off champion is.